what what is going on everybody we're gonna get right into some fishing so let me show you what i'm using real quick i am obviously in the kayak so i do have a doa shrimp tied up this is the glow with the gold glitter belly one of the best looking shrimp for our color waters here unless it's ultra clear it stands out really nicely but still looks very natural i just have a loop knot tied on with about 18 inches of 15 pound fluorocarbon leader coming to a double uni knot on my braid now i have 15 pound braid on a shimano stratic 3000 and then a seven foot medium light st croix avid inshore rod i like that medium light for throwing these lightweight shrimps it's able to cast it pretty effectively and not pull the hook now like always i like to use a scent so i have this, some of this procure shrimp this is just a stinky gel that seems to work really well on these soft plastics so on the doas i kind of just shove it up where the weight is there's a few crevices here that you can put it in so i'll shove it up in there and then the rest i'll just kind of smear all over the body now you want to be careful not to get this stuff on your hands because it can be pretty sticky. Let's go ahead and get in some fishing. So I like to make a, oop, I hooked a black drum the other day and I tightened my line down, but I like to make a long cast and then with the shrimp without a popping cork, I just slowly reel it. Every now and then I'll give it a pop and pause. But most of the time, I'm just going to be slowly reeling it because that's what most of these shrimp do on the bottom. They don't go hopping around unless they're being chased by something. They just swim down and kind of just hang out on the bottom. So we're going to try our luck and see if we can get in something. Big black drum right here. Let's see if I can catch him without scaring him oh there he is ah oh, dang it broke me off man dude I don't know what happened it just broke me off that was a big one too <laughs> I mean I've never really had an issue setting the hook on a black drum maybe I tied a bad knot dang it that was a good fish too let me get on another shrimp. Try that again. Darn, that's upsetting. Oh, there's a fish. What is that? Oh, nice one. Nice one. Stud flounder, stud flounder. Ah, get in here. Mm, come here. Heck yeah, y'all. Right where I thought one would be. He's going in the box because that is a stud flounder. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Woo. I was about to call it quits. Me and the black drum have not been friends today. Flounder, super predictable we had a little cut coming out you know a little creek channel or a pocket and i cast my shrimp right into that pocket and just landed this beautiful flounder y'all check out that fish man what a beautiful fish that right there is a solid flounder probably one of the better ones i've caught this year he's gonna go i didn't bring a cooler but i do have a little hatch up front that i can throw some water in and should be okay up there so I can get home. And that fish ate this DOA shrimp. That's a glow back with the gold glitter belly. And it choked it down. So luckily it was a keeper because it was bleeding everywhere. But now I don't have to bleed it out because it's already bleeding. But we're going to check the leader and re-rig up. I just found a little pocket. Cast that shrimp up because it just looked like a really good ambush spot. And that's what hit. So I am really happy because I was about to call it quits. The black drum were giving me some misery today. I caught so many the other day, so it kind of made up for it today with the black drum. But I will take that flounder any day over a large black drum. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to head back in because I don't want this flounder to go bad. It's windy. I'm tired of getting beat up out here, <laughs> at least for today, because I've already done something this morning. And this is just a secondary trip right in the middle of the day. So I'm very happy with this trip. So let me go ahead and head back.
Oh, there's a good one. There's a good fish. And it's a flounder. And it's a flounder. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. That is awesome, dude. Yes. It's super predictable fish, man. Perfect hook set. And if you didn't know, flounder do have some teeth on them. Check those out. I don't know how well it's focusing, but look at those teeth. So not enough to bite through your leader. I'm using 20 pounds just because we're kind of dirty water. And, and if I can get away with it, I like to use 20. You don't want to stick your finger in their mouth. So I got a pair of these little fish grips. And let me show you this fish. Well, this is a 16 inch flounder. So let me get the hook out of them real quick. And we're going to throw them in the cooler, but check out where that single J hook from that DOA is. Now I didn't change that out from the last flounder I caught. That is the exact same lure that I caught the other one on. Like the same exact one. So a basic shrimp just cannot steer you wrong, but check that out. What an awesome flounder. I finally have my lunch. Man, what a beautiful fish. And it measured out to be 16 inches. So he's gonna go in the box. Cause in Alabama, they only have to be 14 inches and you're allowed five per person in the state of Alabama. So let's throw them in the cooler and see if there's any more sitting over there. Little spot that I just caught this flounder and it's so shallow. So don't be afraid to throw up in real shallow water. But I'm gonna re-adjust this shrimp. Check my leader and the leader's good. But I'm gonna throw some more pro cure on there and we'll get back out and see if there's any more sitting in that spot. Throw some more pro cure on this joker. And we are ready to go. <laughs> oh, something's running from. got it whatever it was i just got it i saw some bait being chased and i cast right there and another flounder another good flounder oh man oh man that's a good one come on i hope he gets in there get in here get in here yeah 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 buddy that's what i'm talking about <laughs> i just saw some bait being chased right there oh man and I cast right up on it and boom, it got smacked. And now I got a solid flounder in the net. Check that out, he choked that bait. Man, let's get this hook out of him. There we go, that's what I like about those single hooks. Y'all, what a beautiful fish, 18 inch fish. So not as big as the first day I was out, but that's still a solid flounder. Heck yeah. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> check that fish out. Man, I am so excited. I, that is just a gorgeous southern flounder. Wow. Not quite a doormat, but it's getting close. This is a beautiful flounder. I will take one of these any day of the week, anytime I go fishing over any other fish inshore, just because of how good these things taste. So, and I don't target them that much, but that shrimp, we just have really low water, but they're very predictable. You just got to find an ambush point. They sit on the bottom like this, and when your bait comes by, they chase it. And all I did was I saw some, it looked like some croaker jumping up, and I cast my shrimp right there and landed this beautiful flounder. I cannot wait to take this home and eat it, and it's going to go in the cooler with my other one. So it is absolutely gorgeous over here. Man. All the old trees, all these old cypress trees. It's just cool seeing all these old trees hanging around and look at the root structures and the barnacles growing on them. It's such a unique place and no, nothing around. But hey, that was a solid, solid mid-morning trip. So I'm gonna head back and load up the kayak and then head home and we will cook these. The first flounder I caught in the video, I stuffed it and I did a baked stuffed flounder, which I've done on video before. If you want to go watch that, I'll try to link that down in the description below. This time we're going to do something a little different. We're going to do flounder po' boys. So that sounds absolutely delicious right now. I am starving. I didn't have anything to eat this morning. And I am going to be even hungrier on my long trip back to the vehicle. I will see y'all there. Let me paddle. I got a long way to go. Well, I am back home and I have my flounder out on the little cutting board. It's actually bigger than the cutting board is. <laughs> Look at that. It's longer than my cutting board. Actually, I'm probably going to do it on the wood because it's very slippery on that thing. I probably could sand that down. But anyway, 
Today, I am using the seven inch sword fillet knife. If y'all wanna pick one up, I'll include their link down in the description below. They are awesome enough to sponsor the channel and they make a great product. I get a lot of offers to try out products and I'm very particular on who I accept to use. And I have thoroughly enjoyed using this fillet knife. So we're gonna start with the bigger one. Flounder actually have four fillets. So you have an upper loin, bottom loin, and then on their bottom side, you have these two pieces of meat as well. These are a little bit thinner, but it's so cool how they sit on the bottom like this. They shuffle around and bury down in the sand and leave their two eyes sticking up. And they come up, eat their prey, and go back down. So the first thing I like to do, they have a lateral line going through the middle, which all fish do. Some are more distinct than others. You can just kind of see right through the middle, that's where their spine is. So what I like to do is cut on their spine. Now they do have scales, but I'm not gonna scale it on these since I'm filleting them. Usually I like to do them whole and stuff it, but we need the fillets. And then you wanna look where their top is. So you can feel very soft, that's their guts. This is firm, that's their meat. Try not to miss any of that head meat and cut at an angle, just like that. Now what I start doing, I stick my knife down in here and start filleting it off that bone. So flexible knife helps a lot as to not cut through to the other side. And you don't want to miss hardly any meat on these fish because they are so delicious. So we'll continue. I kind of pull with my thumb and I scrape the knife and I actually take my time on these flounder. And they have a bunch of small bones here for their fins. So you just gotta fillet over top of those. And then I'm gonna cut down to the tail and I'm not gonna cut it all the way off. I do this with a lot of fish. So what I do is I flip it over, flat surface under here. And we're gonna get this meat off the skin. Usually one fluid motion. So I have a fillet of meat. I fillet that piece off so you can kind of see what I'm doing. Just running my knife along that bone and filleting that meat off. It's a very fresh fish, so it's kind of slippery. No meat wasted. Look at that, all the meats off the bones. That's their backbone. That's why you see me do that first slice in the middle and then cut at the angle. So, and then I leave the skin on, makes life real easy to fillet them. Cause that skin, you can leave on, but they do have scales, so you have to scale it, clean the slime off. Same thing on the back side. You know, this isn't an ideal setup. This is just a picnic table, and I don't have a water hose. Uh, my plan was to use a bucket to uh, move some water over, but I just wanted to get that done fairly quickly. So, But we still got some nice fillets off of this fish, but check that out. Hardly any missed meat. That's how you like it. This head is great crab trap bait, so we'll end up going in the crab trap. Check out these beautiful fillets. These flounder are not bloody at all. Look at the length of that one. And we have four fresh flounder fillets. If you went to go buy this in a store, there ain't no telling how much you would spend. Get this other one cleaned. He's not as big, but we should still be able to pull off some nice meat. And then we'll clean them up, go inside, and get ready to make our po' boys. Does that just not look awesome? That's a few pounds of flounder meat right there. You know how much that would be in a store? But we got to experience catching it and cleaning it and we know exactly where it came from out of the water this morning so we're going to go ahead and cook it today now i'm going to do a panko breadcrumb fried flounder for my po boy sandwiches there's no better way than cooking outside on a gorgeous day like it is today let me go over my ingredients list and show you what we're going to do it's going to be a two-part we're cooking the fish and we're putting the sandwiches together so obviously you have your fish of choice and today it's the flounder have some vegetable oil but you can use whatever you like coconut oil is really healthy sunflower seed oil is healthy but uh just some basic vegetable oil works well and then i have a couple eggs beat up in a bowl from an egg wash and these are some panko breadcrumbs they're plain and what i do is i add some chef paul's seafood magic just enough to kind of give it some color and where you can see it when you mix it up and some salt and pepper and they actually smell really good right now and i cannot wait to fry these fish up so the black stone I have it on low but i'm going to put it on about medium heat you don't want to burn your fish and these are thin fillets so they should cook pretty good so you want just enough oil on there so your fish doesn't stick and a seasoned cast iron or a seasoned griddle your fish shouldn't stick with a good coating now i'm going to take my flounder and look how beautiful it is no red meat no bones 
I'm gonna dip it in this egg wash just to coat the whole fish. And then coat our fish in the panko. So flounder, you don't have to go all out on seasoning. It's a delicious fish by itself. You don't have to cover any bad taste up. And flounder doesn't require much. So very simple ingredients and it should come out delicious. Set this fish down and that's sizzling perfect. So you don't want it to start flaring up when you set it down because then it's going to be burnt and the fish is going to be raw. So we're going to do that same process. So here's the last filet and I have eight filets. You know, you get four off of each fish. So that was two eggs that I beat up and then a little plastic, you know, this is a Chinese food container that we keep for just for these purposes. And that worked out perfect for a two fish, eight filets. So just to give you a little basis. And we're going to give these about five minutes on this medium heat. You know your cooking device better than I do. So if you're cooking on the stove top or you're deep frying it, you just, just adjust from there. But a good rule of thumb is about five minutes on medium heat for these thinner fillets. Well, I'm gonna start flipping this real small piece. So, oh yeah, that's what you want. You want it that golden brown color and that's when you know it's time to flip. See, that is perfect. So, cause those were the first two I put on. So I'm just gonna go down the line. These are a little bit thicker fillets here but they don't take long to cook. It smells amazing. All right, let's go ahead and start plating these. So I got my paper towel just to absorb any excess oil. Start on the small one. Oh yeah, check this out. Let's get these last two up. That right there smells so good. I cannot wait to put these on a sandwich. So let's go ahead and kill our heat. Make sure, all right. Well, we are inside our flounder Man, that looks so good. So, this is all what you decide to do. It's kind of like tacos. Sandwiches and tacos go hand in hand. It's all personal preference of what you like on it. But I have some shredded lettuce, sliced tomato, onion, lemon, some pickles that are pretty good, so I'm gonna eat one. And that's a little bit of homemade sriracha mayonnaise, but you can also use regular mayonnaise. So first thing I wanna do, take one of these po' boy rolls. I'm gonna spread some of that sauce on it let's get some of that homemade sriracha mayonnaise i'm gonna take my fish fillet let's get one that fits perfect on the bun i don't think you can get any more perfect than that look at that it's the exact size of these rolls and i didn't toast the rolls which you can butter the rolls up and warm them up i kind of like the po' boys when you have the colder vegetables on there it's pretty refreshing let's take some shredded lettuce Some tomato. I'm gonna take a few slices of this red onion. I'm not a big fan of onions, but kind of compliments the sandwich here. And I'll do some pickles on the side. These are sweet pickles. You can use dill or those spears that are really good as well. And then a slice of lemon. This is all personal preference. I'm gonna squeeze it over it. Boom, there we go. Now, the last thing I like to do is take some of this Texas Pete hot sauce and just drizzle it on there. I don't douse it, but just a little drizzle and it kind of tastes like buffalo sauce. It complements everything pretty well. Let's go outside and see how our sandwich tastes. That looks like something you get from a restaurant. You just need some fries or something healthy on the side and it's pretty good, but these sandwiches are very filling. So we're gonna put this together and give it a taste. Between tacos and a po' boy, if you ain't getting messy, you're not enjoying your sandwich right. So let's put that together and give it a try. All right, cannot wait to try a bite of this. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm. Let me finish chewing. I'm gonna go ahead and close this video out because that was absolutely amazing. It tasted so good. Pretty much better than what I've had in a lot of restaurants. That flounder was so fresh. It came out of the water this morning and ended up, I think it's like 12.30, 12.40. Just a few hours ago, it was out there swimming and now we're able to enjoy it. You cannot get much fresher than that. And it's very easy to do. It's kind of like a little buffet and it's all personal preference. So if you have people that are more picky or like more condiments, you can add or take away from this. I'm gonna set this down, close out the video so I can continue munching into my lunch because that was amazing.
But I appreciate y'all for watching as always. Everything I use, I try to link down in the description below, including my website if you want to pick up some merch and rigs and also the companies that support the channel so we can make more content like this. If you have not subscribed already, I'd appreciate it if you go hit that subscribe button at the end of this video. If you already are, thank you as always. And we'll see you on another Bama Saltwater Fishing video. I want to thank the good Lord up above for everything he does for us. And we'll see you later.